Hi, I'm Melissa Mortensen of Polka Dot Chair, and I am here in the Fat Quarter Shop Studios today to show you how to make a very simple tote bag. The tote bag we're gonna make today is this one. It's for sure a beginner sewing project. If you've never made a tote bag before, this would be a great one to start with. Um, the tote bag that we're gonna make, I'm gonna show you how to make like the basic tote bag pattern, and then um, we have turned a panel from my new fabric line, Fox Farm, has this like fun cutout on it and I'll show you the full panel but we've gone and turned the panel into a pocket for the back so you can kind of see how that all goes together all right so this is the panel and I've just chosen a couple of the squares from the panel to turn into a pocket for the back for the front of the back so what you're gonna need to do is you need to cut yourself um, pieces for the front of the bag and the back of the bag, which I'm calling the bag outside. And then for the lining of the bag, you need two pieces, one for the lining front and the lining back. And then you also need to cut out pieces for the pocket. So I'll give you the measurements in case you wanna make your pocket from a different fabric. But what you need to do is just cut simple rectangles. This is the bag outside fabric. And this is a 16 inch by 18 inch piece of fabric. And so I designed it that way so that if you wanna use a fat quarter, you can. So this is 16 by 18. And then the panel, the squares are already sized for you, but this is a 12 by 12 piece of fabric. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut two pieces 16 by 18 for the outside of the bag, and then two pieces 16 by 18 for the lining of the bag. Then you're gonna cut out two pieces for the pocket one is going to be the outside of the pocket, what's going to show. And then the other piece, this also 12 by 12, is going to be for the lining of the pocket. So that when you look at the pocket this way, there's fabric on the inside. It's not just like raw edges and stuff. So we want to line the pocket. So I have my pocket piece here and my pocket lining. So the first thing I did is I cut a piece of lightweight interfacing the same size as the pocket. And I've already gone and pre-fused it to the back of the pocket. So everything has been fused. That's the only thing I've done ahead of time. And then I've taken another piece of fabric that's the same size as the pocket. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin it all the way around. And I'm actually gonna show you with a pen. I'll pin it all the way around and then I'm going to start sewing here and I'm going to sew all the way around all four sides and then I'm going to stop sewing right here so that I'm going to leave myself a hole about that big in the bottom of the pocket so I can turn it right side out. So this piece has been stitched on the four sides. Um, you can't see the stitching line too well, but you can kind of see it a little better from that side. And for this, I used a quarter inch seam allowance because the panel has a quarter inch seam allowance built into the outside of those blocks. And so you just want the stitching line to be on the edge of the block. So quarter inch seam allowance. And then what I'm gonna do is just take my scissors and I'm gonna cut the four corners off. out of the way and then that hole that I left I'm gonna come in and I am going to turn the fabric right side out after you're done turning it right side out you want to use like a hair marker or the purple thing purple thing <laughs> and you're gonna use that and you're gonna come in here on the corner and you are going to poke these corners out and then I kind of use that to kind of get into that seam allowance to kind of like push it out a little bit too. So we're going to push out all of the corners. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come over and we're going to press it. And all I'm going to do is, so one thing when you're making bags that's different than quilts is you want to use the steam and the heat of the iron to kind of like mold your fabric. So you're not worried as much with, um, going back and forth as you would be with quilting because it's okay if you distort your seams because you're gonna kind of like turn it into the shape you want almost. So sometimes even what I'll do is I'll like come up here and I'll steam it a little bit and then come in with my fingers 
and get that seam nice and crisp. You want to do that around all four sides. And it looks like this one that I went ahead and like left the top opening instead of the bottom, it doesn't matter because they're all going to get stitched closed. So I'm just going to turn that under where the opening was and press that and then come over here to the last side. Use your fingers, like just kind of work that seam. And then come over. Really good pressing. Okay. So now what you want to do is we want to go ahead and we were going to add a line of top stitching. Um, top stitching just means you're going to click, you're going to stitch really close to the edge of the side of the fabric. So we're just going to come here and we're going to top stitch along the top of the pocket and it's just for decorative to make it look nice. So what I like to do is just pick a part of the um, presser foot and just line it up on the presser foot so that I know it's straight all the way across. I've just top stitched that. So now it's ready to attach to the back. So what I like to do usually is um, I just work with one side of the bag at a time. So I'm just gonna work with the front of the bag and I'll come in and I fold it in half and then you're just gonna finger press it so you can see where the center is. And if you have a hard time seeing where the center is, go ahead and just like take your iron and hit it for a second. But I can see my center seam pretty easily there. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this piece. And then I actually will take a pin and mark where the center of this piece is. And then you need a ruler. And so what I found for this particular bag, I think it looks best to have the top of the pocket three and a half inches down from the top edge of the bag. So I'm just gonna put my pocket on, kind of eyeball where I think it should go. Make sure it's right side up. <laughs> like the words are facing up, so that's way too close. So we're just gonna move it down till we get to three and a half right there. And the center's lined up. And then you always wanna check the other side because that's the way you know it's straight across. So that needs to come up a little bit on that side. Okay, so we've got this centered and three and a half inches down from the top edges. And then we're just gonna come in and we're gonna pin it all the way around the edge. After it's pinned, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move over to the sewing machine. We're gonna start sewing a little bit off the top of the pocket. We're gonna sew down a little bit and then we're gonna back stitch and then we're three or four stitches and then we're gonna stitch again because we wanna make sure that this is stitched down really well because it's like a point of tension on the back. So, and I pick like a part of my presser foot so I'm just gonna keep the edge of that lined up with that part of the presser foot. Then I was like to kind of move my pins over here, so I've got them close by, and we're going to start sewing. So I'm going to come down, sew a little bit, and then I'm going to back stitch, and then I'm going to sew again. And this time I'm going to go ahead and sew around the three sides of the pocket. Okay, when you get to the corner, you want to go ahead and put your needle down. Put your presser foot up and pivot and turn. And then go ahead and do the other side. And then put needle down. Press your foot up. When we get to this point, we're gonna stitch off of it, stitch back, and stitch forward again. So after you've got your pocket stitched onto your bag, you're ready to go ahead and put the handles on the bag, or the straps. So what I'm using for straps, just because I want to keep it simple, is I'm using cotton webbing. Um, the cotton webbing I'm using is an inch and a half wide and I have cut it to 26 inches long. You can cut it any size you want. If you want short handles, you want longer handles, it's totally up to you. I found 26 makes kind of a nice tote bag size. Then what you wanna do is after you cut it, you need to make sure that you take some fray check and you finish off the ends. Because what can happen is if you stitch it and then it gets pulled after a while, it'll unravel if you don't finish the ends and then your handle's gonna fall out. So just go ahead, cut it, and hit it with a little bit of fray check. 
And then it's really easy to do this part. We're just gonna lay the handle like this. So it looks like it's upside down, but it's not. And you're just gonna line up the handle with the edge of the pocket, and then you're just gonna extend that maybe like an eighth to a quarter inch above the edge, top edge of the bag. And you're gonna pin it right there. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I am just going to stitch like a quarter inch in from the edge and I'm just gonna stitch across the top to hold those in place. I'm gonna stitch this down. You can go over it twice if you want to. I usually go over it once because it's gonna get, oops, it's gonna get stitched down again um, when you sew the back together. So usually just once is enough. So now we're gonna take the other piece that's 16 by 18 for the back of the bag and we're gonna pin the handles on it. And we just wanna make sure the handles are in the same place on the back as the front so that when you hold it, it's gonna look okay. So this, we're gonna just use that as a guide. And then I'm going to pin them, just lining up the edges, lining up where the handles are. Just make sure, I have made the mistake before, I've had this like twisted, and then you get a twist in your handle, so I usually come and just kind of make that nice and smooth and flat, and pin it right there. And then I'm gonna come over and stitch it exactly the same way I stitched the front. After you've stitched your handles on and your pocket to the front of the bag, we're gonna go ahead and assemble it. And one thing I forgot to mention before, um, I did go ahead and add a layer of the lightweight interfacing to both the front piece and the back piece of the outside of the bag. So those have been interfused already. It's just fusible, you just iron it on. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the front and the back pieces and you can use pins, you can use, sometimes I'll use binding clips, and we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna pin it around the edge of the bag, around the three sides. Okay, and then as you're pinning, um, you'll notice the handles are in here. You just wanna make sure that your handle doesn't like get stuck in your seam or anything like that, so just kind of as you pin, make sure that all your pieces are kind of out of the way. Okay, so then I'm gonna come over to the machine and really simple, I'm gonna use a half inch seam allowance for everything else on the bag. And I'm gonna go ahead and with a half inch seam allowance, I'm gonna stitch around the three sides of the bag. And I'm gonna make sure I top, or I back stitch at the two top parts of the bag where I start and where I stop. Now, I will point something out. The machine that I'm using has what's called a dual feed foot, which kind of acts like a walking foot. Most of the time when you're making this project, you can use the regular foot on your sewing machine, but depending on your machine, if it starts to like bunch up or you're having a hard time feeding the fabric, go ahead and switch to a walking foot and it might like fix a lot of those. Actually, I use a walking foot quite a bit when I make bags, because you're dealing kind of like a quilt, you're dealing with lots of different layers of fabric. Okay, so what you wanna do now is we need to press these seams open. So I like to use a small ironing board or sometimes I'll use a sleeve board, kind of whatever I have around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to press, start pressing the seam open. And I need, I'm right-handed, so I need to move this to the other side here. So I can get that far down. So to get the rest of this, I'm gonna take, I'm actually gonna take this as a um, clapper, but it'll work for this. So I'm gonna put that inside 
of my bag. You, you can also use a sleeve board or if your ironing board has like an extension for ironing sleeves. And we're just gonna come in here and use that to get that seam nice and flat. And we're gonna do that for both sides. And what I usually do for the bottom of the bag, cause you can't fold it open, is I bring it out here and I fold it up. And what that will do is this will press the seam open on the bottom of the bag for me. Like that. And you do wanna be careful, make sure that like your interfacing has already been ironed down or if you have like a lot of interfacing left, you wanna trim it off because then you might get interfacing on your iron because you're ironing on that side of the fabric. Okay, then I'm just gonna come in real quickly and I'm just gonna trim the two corners off the sides of the bag. Like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna set it aside because I'm done with the outside of the bag for now. So I'm gonna take the bag lining. So what I have done already is I have taken the two bag lining pieces and I have ironed fusible fleece to those. Just a piece of fusible fleece on both. The fusible fleece is thicker and when I make bags, I prefer to put like whatever the thicker interfacing is on the inside of the bag because sometimes thicker interfacing will wrinkle and I don't like the outside of my bags to look wrinkled. So I'll usually put like a lightweight interfacing on like the outside facing part of the bag and then whatever the heavier interfacing is on the lining. So if it wrinkles, you don't see it. So I've pinned them together and I stitched them around the edge with a quarter inch seam allowance the exact same way that I did the front of the bag. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna press the seams open the same way I pressed the seams open on the other side of the bag. Okay, now we're actually gonna assemble the bag. So what we've got here is we have the bag lining piece that has been stitched around the sides, pressed, and then I turned it so the fabric is right side out. So it's right side out on the lining. And then the outside of the bag, we have left the way we stitched it. So it's wrong side out. So we are going to take the lining and we are going to shove the lining into the bag. So if you get mixed up with this part, like you can rewind the video and watch it again, but just remember you always want the right sides of your fabric facing each other. So if you happen to end up with like the bag right side out and the lining inside out, it's fine. I just find it easier to do it this way. Um, and you're just gonna push that in there. Okay, so now what you need to do, and you do need to kind of like watch what you're doing at this point, is we're gonna start on the side seams. So I'm just gonna take the side seam of the lining and the side seam of the bag, and I'm gonna pin those together like that. And then I'm gonna come around here and I'm going to pin the other side seam. So I'm gonna do that first. And as long as you've stitched all your seam allowances the same, which I, like I said, I'm using a half inch seam allowance, then these should fit into each other pretty nicely. And then you're just gonna come around and pin it so that your raw edges are even and your seam allowances are lined up. And then the other thing to make sure, keep make sure your handles like are facing down. So you don't wanna, you do not wanna stitch it like this with the handle out. You wanna make sure the handle is stuffed into the bag and that it's laying flat so you don't get like a pucker, it doesn't get caught in a seam or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep pinning. Now what we're gonna do is you wanna figure out which side the pocket's on and I can see from the seam that the pocket's on this side. So on the side the pocket's not on, which is the back of the bag, we're gonna sew. And we are going to sew starting on the back of the bag here. And we're gonna go all the way around and then we're gonna stop again and we're gonna leave ourselves, I'm gonna take this pin out actually, and we're gonna leave ourselves about this much of an opening so we can turn the bag right side out. And you also wanna make sure when you do this that you backstitch, like backstitch to here and backstitch here. Cause otherwise when you go to like turn the bag right side out, like the force of it may pull the seam out. So we're gonna go ahead and move to the machine. Most sewing machines come with some sort of tray or an arm on them. So you wanna go ahead and pull off 
the arm or the tray or something so you've got this down to just like its smallest point and I usually put my pins here okay so this is going to allow me to stitch around this so I'm going to start stitching right here also using half inch seam allowance and I'm going to stitch, and I'm going to back stitch a couple times. Okay, then when you start getting close back to where the pin is on the other side, go ahead and stitch that and do a little bit of back stitch and clip it. And then we're going to go and we're going to turn the bag right side out you are going to just reach your hand in the bag. And this is where people think like they've messed up or they're confused because it seems like it's not gonna make any sense, <laughs> but it does. So you, first of all, you're gonna pull the lining out and then you're gonna stick your hand in the actual outside of the bag and you are gonna turn it right side out. So this fabric is now right side out. And you're just gonna take a second. The seams should be nice and pressed but I usually take some sort of like hair marker or pointy tool or scissors, whatever I've got on hand, end of a pencil. Poke those corners out so they're nice and crisp and it's already been pressed. Now, a little trick that I found is before I put the lining back in the bag, I'm gonna kind of tug on it so that I know that seam allowance like is like tight, there's not like any overlapping fabric. I'm gonna tug on that like that and then I'm gonna grab my iron and I am going to press to like set the seam before I finish turning the back. And that's going to help me get like a nice crisp top on the back. So I'm going to turn it there and then I'm going to do it on the other side. Now, on this side, you can see where I left that opening because I left this open. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this under so it matches the top of the bag and press that. And I want a nice crisp edge right there so that as I keep turning, I can tell where that fold goes. Okay. Now, after you've got that pressed, I'm gonna take the lining and we're just gonna shove the lining into the bag. So however it is that you wanna do that. And after you're done, like usually after I'm done with a bag, I'll spend maybe five minutes, almost like five minutes pressing it again to get it like a really nice shape. It makes the biggest difference. Like at the end, if you press, like you can fix so many ills on a bag if you spend a little bit of time and press it the right way after you're done sewing it. Okay, but for now we just wanna kinda get that lining turned under. So I kind of mess with it. And now I'm gonna go back to the iron again. And I'm just gonna put the edge of the bag on the edge of my ironing board. And this is kind of where it was helpful to press that earlier because now you know that's like a nice clean seam. Sometimes the lining will poke up. Actually, I don't mind that because I usually try and pick colorful lining for the bag. So I just leave it. And we're just gonna come real quickly. And we are gonna press around top of the bag. Okay, so after you're done pressing all of that, you move that out of the way, then we're gonna come over and we're gonna top stitch the bag. So I'm gonna stitch the whole bag this time. And in the process of top stitching that, it's gonna close that opening all the way up for me. When I do the top stitching, I usually like to start on a seam allowance. Also make sure your straps are out of the way because you don't wanna sew your strap to your bag. So you're gonna like kind of tug on that. Make sure it's out of the way. Um, if your machine struggles a little bit through the fabric, you can try a walking foot. You can also try a longer stitch length. So I'm actually going to go ahead and change my stitch length to a three from a 2.5. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and same thing. I'm gonna pick a part on my sewing machine foot that I wanna keep guided, like the, use that as a guide so that my fabric's straight so you get a nice top stitch. So I'm just gonna keep that right there on the edge of the foot. If you're worried about where that opening is, you can stick a pin there. So I'll go ahead and stick a pin just to make sure it doesn't like kind of get off track as I'm sewing.
I'm just gonna keep stitching until you get back where you started. Make sure you stitch over the seam again. Okay, so after you've done that, your bag's done. So there's a couple things I recommend doing at the end. Obviously come in with your small scissors, um, get all your strings off. Sometimes when you stitch the handles on, if you stitch the stitching line too far down, it'll show. So just go ahead if you need to unpick that or anything like that. And then like I said, I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but I just kinda wanna like point out, you wanna get this bag flat and these seams flat. So I will use lots of steam and I will just come in and press all of this until it looks nice and crisp and flat um, and it makes a really big difference at the end of your back because it kind of just like helps set that interfacing, helps you set your stitches. So you can see from the one I already made what a big difference it makes to get all of that flattened out. So that's the tote bag. That is a very simple tote bag, beginner tote bag pattern. Um, if you're looking for something, if you do this and you like it and you want to like take the next step with tote bags, um, I do have a pattern at Fat Quarter Shop. It's called the Derby Tote. It has same kind of idea, but it has three different kinds of pockets. It has a fun little envelope pocket. It's got a big pocket on the front that's divided and it has a flat bottom. So if you want to put like lots of books in it or something like that, it's a little bit better. But um, thank you for joining me today and I hope that you will give the tote bag a try.